Anyways, so your cat attacked you. Oh man, are you okay, Sarah? I hope you're okay. Now, this is Machu Picchu. And this picturesque, picturesque scene is um, going to be very common for when we're looking at the west coast of South America. Uh, it's just beautiful mountains. It's going to be awesome. So we're going to see some good stuff here. Okay. So Latin America. I've used this term a couple times. Latin America is a cultural region, meaning it is not like – so it's, it's the combination of a couple things here. So it's this area that is going to be between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, and it contains Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. Now, all of the time I get the question, Mr. Kenny, is it Caribbean or Caribbean? And guess what? It's one of those extremely frustrating times where you could say either one. And I will actually use them interchangeably, which drives me insane because I like being consistent with things. But like if I go say, I'm talking about like the movie Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, I say Pirates of the Caribbean, but then I'm like, oh, the Caribbean islands. It's so like, so it's very frustrating, but if you can pronounce it the same way or you could pronounce it either way and they are both actually correct. So when we talk about Latin America, this is what we're talking about. Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. Now, sometimes you will see people say, Latin America has two parts, Central America, including the Caribbean, and South America. Other times, someone will say, Latin America has three parts, Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. It's, some people put the Caribbean with Central America, some people don't. For some reason, no one has ever said, this is how it shall be, and let it be that way. Um, now, so these areas, the seas are going to be very important. The ocean is going to be important. Um, and it, it's a huge area, and it's going to be super duper diverse. And this PowerPoint is like, how can I take a big, crazy, diverse, super different in all these spots area and throw it all into one quick summary so that you have an idea of at least what we're talking about? All right. And honestly, uh, from this slide, because some of you are writing feverishly, and I love you so much for it. Um, you just need to know that Latin America is a cultural region and it contains Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. You can shorten it just to that. That's all you really actually need. Coolio? So, Latin America is a cultural region and it contains Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. I like to differentiate the Caribbean and Central America just so that we remember that they're there. Although, like I said, some people just combine those two already in their head. And it's not right or wrong to do it that way. Now, when we look at this map, what kind of geographic features are standing out to us? When we look at this map right here, is there anything that stands out to us as we see it? Anything that we see as like maybe a dominant kind of geographic feature or that we see lots of anything or a, a dearth, a lack of other things? Yep. A lot of you see mountains. We're going to see Central America is almost completely covered with mountains. You know, we have the Yucatan Peninsula, which is going to be one of the few areas in Central America that's not covered. We're going to see the West Coast of South America is completely mountainous. I had a friend who um, spent a lot of time in uh, Peru and like loved it and talked so much about climbing the mountains. But we see even in Northwestern, we see lots of highlands and in the, uh, or excuse me, Northeastern. And in the Eastern coast right here, we have the Brazilian highlands, lots of hills, mountains, things like that. So lots of mountains, great. Is there anything else that we notice that might be dominating the geographic scene for either Central or South America? All right, Sahil knows that there are rainforests. We can't really see it in the map, but he's absolutely correct. Rainforests are going to be huge uh, in this region, the Amazon Basin, which, of course, is also going to be a big thing. I was hoping people would mention that the Amazon River and the River Basin is going to be a huge part of that. So, Sergut, let's move on. Um, now... Like I said, so for this PowerPoint, there's going to be a lot of things. I don't want you writing every single word that pops up. 
Um, you need to know that Central America is mostly mountains and highlands. Okay. I am not going to go and like be super picky about most of the geographic features on this one. Um, just because it's such a huge area that we're going to be looking at. I mean, we're looking at literally like a continent and a half. So that wouldn't be fair. Um, if you don't know what a highland is, um, let's just think about that. It's land that's high. So it's mountainous or hilly country. So you need to know that most of Central America is hilly or mountainous. They are highlands. And uh, what we have here, we have the Sierra Madres. Um, that are going to be the the west and the east um, in Spanish. I think it's occidental and incidental or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, so the Sierra Madres, and we have the Valley of Mexico in between there, which we're going to spend lots of time in the Valley of Mexico when we get uh, later on in our unit. Very excited about. Very excited. So you need to know here, Central America, mountainous. Dun, dun, dun. Stop trying to be a super champ and have every single word there because I'm moving on. Okay, now we go down to South America and we see that we have the Andes Mountains along the West Coast. The Andes Mountains are the longest mountain range in the world, so there's no mountain range longer. And also, it has the second highest mountains. So only Mount Everest is able to go and um, top. And the, and the Himalayas, obviously, as a whole. So the Himalayas are the tallest mountain range in the world, but not the longest, whereas the Andes are the longest and the second tallest. Here's some beautiful pictures, because I like pictures. And it gives us an idea of what, once again, this is another view of Machu Picchu. We see there are snow-covered mountains. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I would love to see that in a very safe way. Um, I'm afraid of heights, typically, so I wouldn't want to be like on top of that mountain unless it was like a very flat part. Um, but that's gorgeous. I mean, just beautiful country. Now, over here, we have the Ghana Highlands. You don't have to write anything about this. Just here's more pictures to see. I mean, check out this plateau action here. I mean, look at that cliff. Isn't that wild? Once again, I would love to be there in a very safe way. Maybe if I had, like, some special bubble with a parachute, I would be okay. I mean, we got the waterfall. Oh, it's so cool. We have the Brazilian Highlands here. Check it out. There's not a lot of writing with this PowerPoint. This is more like, let's just see. Oh yeah, that's so cool. That is amazing, guys. I'm so jelly. I would love to go to Machu Picchu. We'll talk about that later on, but we didn't even know about that till like 1910 or something like that we discovered it and because it was so hidden away. And we see there's actually a lot of volcanoes. Now, thankfully, they're mostly dormant. I think they might all might be dormant. Um, I'd have to double check. But this is where we start having like the Ring of Fire. Have you gone over that in science yet? Good, yeah. This is part of the Ring of Fire. Good. So this is, shouldn't be completely foreign to you. Hooray. Yay for Mr. LaRose. I got to see him today. I haven't seen him in forever. It was so, so nice. And now we have the lowlands over here. Um, so these are the Pampas. Uh, and I do want you to know that the Pampas are the farming region. And you could say Pampas are lowlands and they're grassy plains. Good for farming. See how you can shorten that? So, yeah. So here we have the Pampas, the Patagonia Pampas. Uh, and we're going to also have the, um, oh gosh, where are the other Pampas? There's two Pampas. This is the Patagonia um, Pampas right there, though. And it's the lowlands, um, and they're great for farming. Lots of, like, cattle rustlers and stuff, too. Uh, over the summer, I was listening to a podcast series talking about um, how Latin America got its independence because um, Spain ruled most of Latin America and it talked about all like the, the cattle herdsmen and stuff like that. It was very interesting. Very interesting. Here we see more uh, lowlands. The Amazon Basin is a lowland and it's a rainforest and 40%. Can you believe that? 40% of South America is actually in this. 
Uh, it's pretty cool. And you get all of the amazing animals in there. Aren't they cool? I love it. That's a giant snake, though. That might not be so cool. <laughs> Stop trying to be a super trooper. You don't have to write every word. <laughs> all right. So the Amazon River. Now, Amazon River, because nothing can ever be simple. Some atlases will say, it is the longest river in the world. Other atlases will say, the Nile River is the longest river in the world. And I think it depends on like where you start measuring the Amazon River, because the Amazon River gets kind of complicated, because as we see, like it has all these tributaries, all, like the, it's just a huge area. And so people argue about this all of the time. Um, I typically, could, the Amazon River definitely has like more water, just because of how the nature of it. Um, but yeah, so they're both around 4,000 miles. So I don't know why some books say one and some say the other. I wish just like how I wish someone would say, this is how you pronounce Caribbean or Caribbean. Someone would just definitively say, this is the longest river. What does Google say? I think Google says the Amazon. What is the longest river in the world? Oh my goodness. See, it doesn't even pop up, like, naturally. All right, so this one says that the White Nile is the longest at 4,130 miles and that the Amazon is going to be 3,976 miles. Um, but, like, the amount of water, like, I'll just, I'll just pop it up there. Like, look at the amount of water, like, difference here. Like, woo! <laughs> but anyways, moving on. Dewey, stop. Uh-oh. Mr. Kenny's got lost. There we go. <sighs> the Orinoco River, you don't have to write anything about it. I just like to show you things. So here's the Orinoco River. Um... It's important for um, Venezuela, but um, we're not really going to worry about that. Uh, Rio de la Plata, right there. Once again, not going to worry about it. This is more just so you can be aware. You don't have to write anything about this one. Lots of shipping, lots of trade. All right. Now, one of the things that we're going to see is there are going to be many dry climates. One spot would be Baja, Mexico, which we have over here. Um, and often it's called Baja, California. Um, it's part of Mexico. Um, we have a Patagonian plateau as well. Uh, we also have deserts in Chile. Um, so there you go. You don't have to write a lot here. We also have tropical climate. So we have some places that are super dry and we have other places that are tropical and that's going to be like our rainforest. Um, one of the cool things about the rainforest is just how there's so much wildlife and diversity that we don't even know about all the animals there. And we're finding a lot of really interesting medicines and things, and that's one of the scary parts about how there's so much deforestation, people destroying the rainforest, because there's so much we don't know about it, and those things might be lost forever. Um, but you don't have to write a lot. You can just talk about how there's you know lots of rainforest. You know, Rainforest is tropical. We also have temperate areas. We live in a temperate area where it's, you know, warm and cold, you know, never too warm, never too cold. And um, these are going to be places in Paraguay, Uruguay, and northern Argentina. Remember, like I said, this is more just to show you these places so you can see it, have an idea in your head. I'm not so worried about, like, I'm not going to, like, the, the geography kind of questions you're going to have on your quizzy poo are, like, what components make up Latin America, things like that. You know, so we do have some hot areas like the Yucatan Peninsula. It's where sugarcane is grown. That's going to be a big part, unfortunately, for the, like our last, you know, we're talking about the slave trade because it's like kind of with the whole Caribbean. The Caribbean is going to be pretty hot and that's where they're going to grow sugarcane. But also we get bananas from there. You know, I didn't like bananas growing up because the bananas I had growing up are actually different than the bananas we have today. Um, there's this blight that wound up destroying like the one breed of banana that everybody used to eat when I was a kid. And um, that's why if you have banana flavored candy, like a runt, it tastes different than if you eat a banana today because it's actually based on a different kind of banana. So fun fact, you never wanted to know.
Um, here we just see that there's places that, you know, that are temperate, once again, just showing some of the things that they grow. You don't have to write anything here. This is more just like, check it out. Uh, there are cold areas too that are high in altitude and things like potato, barley, and wheat are grown there. And that's it. So I wanted to go and give you guys that experience of getting to see um, a lot of Latin America. There's still way more than I haven't